ladies and gentlemen, yes, I am still at home recovering. I'm gonna probably be here for a while, but I, I wanted to get this review out to you because it's a film made by Scott Cooper, and Scott Cooper is a fine filmmaker. He has amassed a rather impressive array of narrative films in his repertoire, even though he's really had no formal training in either uh, movie script writing or in filmmaking itself. He owes his big break in Hollywood to his close friend, Robert Duvall, who, by the way, has a supporting role in this his latest movie. Cinematic Class is about to begin. Your professor. Is it? Greetings, salutations, and other sundry affairs. I am your cinematic professor and purveyor of truth. In movies, and tonight's lesson plan is a film called The Pale Blue Eye. Now, I'd like to think that Scott Cooper actually launched his career uh, through this show. Let me kind of explain that to you. When he released his very first film, which was Crazy Heart with Jeff Bridges, the studio, because he was a new filmmaker, sent him on a pretty massive tour. Uh, he was able to stop here in our home base of Pittsburgh, but like most of these tours, all of the stations he stopped at, they gave him maybe a three, if he was lucky, a four-minute segment to talk about his film. Well, we didn't do that here on this show. We gave him an entire 30 minutes. In fact, we were even talking when the camera shut down because, uh, you know, we, we like talking film and it, it, was a, it was a good experience. That 30-minute interview uh, went viral and uh, managed to garner two different national awards uh, for this show. So that certainly is a, is a good thing. Now, now, Scott Cooper, of course, is a superstar. He works regularly with Christian Bale and his good friend Robert Duvall. So he is big enough now that he doesn't do interviews anymore out of the top 15 market. So as a result, he you know doesn't swing by the cameras and talk to us anymore. But that's okay. I still think we kind of helped jumpstart his career because that half-hour interview did garner an awful lot of attention. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Scott's latest movie is called The Pale Blue Eye, and it incorporates historical figures into a fictional narrative. I like that kind of stuff. I even like reading those types of you know, historical fiction novels. I think they're, they're really worthwhile. Unfortunately, however, it falls prey to the Netflix curse. <laughs> what is the Netflix curse? Glad you asked. I will explain. Christian Bale plays Augustus. He is a crime scene investigator, kind of like a, an old-time CSI guy, if you will. And when bodies start begin appearing at the United States Military Academy in West Point, New York, he is called to the case. And it's not too long before he enlists the help of one of the Academy's novice cadets, a guy named Edgar Allan Poe, who was played by Harry Melling. Okay, also starring in this movie, I said, was Robert Duvall. Gillian Anderson is in this uh, as well. You know, Scott has a decent story here, uh, but he falls victim to the Netflix curse. Let me explain to you what that is. As a fledgling studio, and you have to admit that Netflix still is, even though it's put out a lot of product, still is a fledgling studio. Netflix believes, as most fledgling studios do, uh, that if its films are longer, they will somehow uh, gain a tier of gravitas. They will be more uh, accepted as, as viable. The, that maxim is false, by the way. I just want you to know that. The man who says more and less is the better man, always. As a result, the second act of The Pale Blue Eye is so long, and uh, it really bogs down. Uh, incredibly for this story. And uh, yeah, you could probably doze off during that, during that second act or at least start flicking the dial looking for something else to watch. Speaking of flicking dials, perhaps now it's time to peel back 
the veils of time and go back to the early Cretaceous period. For the nation's first and only prehistoric film critic, it's real. I've got to tell you that Scott Cooper makes some really good, enjoyable movies. The Pale Blue Eye, however, is not one of his best. And now that you have learned what you have learned, you're in it.